Permaculture is a design science based on three simple ethics. Care for the earth, care for people. And share the surplus. Permaculture also has core principles that guide us in creating sustainable abundance. Nature is our model in permaculture. The meander of a river teaches us how to design a path. We're always looking at connections and flows. Designing relationships. Looking at where things are in relationship to one another like putting the plants and the herbs that we need most often closest to the house. Catching water up high in the landscape and storing it so it can gravity feed down. We favor biological resources over the use of fossil fuels or heavy chemicals a low carbon footprint. A reed bed will purify wastewater. And a living machine like this one at Findhorn treats raw sewage with plants and algae. Plants catch and store the sun's energy. And so can we. Using the energy of sun and wind We celebrate diversity because diversity gives us resilience and true abundance. But to see how these principles work in practice, let's visit a permaculture designer. Meet Eric Olson using the classic designer's tool, a hammock. Eric is one of the key teachers for Earth Activist Training, and he also has his own company, Permaculture Artisans. Eric's own garden is based on flowing patterns and diversity. In it, every plant and every element serves more than one function. Calendula not only looks pretty, but you can eat it. It attracts beneficial insects, and it's a medicinal used in healing ointments and salves. And a core principle of sustainability is to obtain a yield. Eric definitely knows how to do that. Here's a food forest he designed on a terraced hillside in Sonoma County. It's based on many mutually beneficial associations of plants that we call gills. A forest has many layers of growth, from the canopy down to the understory, to the low shrubs and the roots. So we're getting our layers, right? So we've got, this is gonna be upper canopy in this part of the food forest. This is lower canopy. And then we have our penstemons and our insectary bird, hummingbird attracting um, insectary perennials that are creating another layer. We've got some lower layers with this yarrow. And then we've got our clover, our nitrogen fixing ground cover, which is pretty much a perennial cover in most of the terraces. And this, this clover is really, there's not getting any irrigation except for surplus water that's coming from the irrigation system on the berms. These were planted in February. So you work your soil correctly, you put the right soil amendments in, you slow water down, you design it correctly, and you're gonna have, a, I mean, when we got these, when we got these trees, and Laura can testify, I pruned them back to a stick. So we're gonna have pine nuts, hazelnut, walnut. We have 
Asian pear, apple, plums, peaches, nectarines, um, all different blueberries, persimmons, figs. These are all planted here. Cornelian cherries, cherry trees, mulberries, weeping mulberries. They're all in this system, so we'll go ahead and explore. In your farm, you always want to have a certain percentage that is focused on just building soil because you have so many plants that are drawing nutrients out. And then, of course, you're gilding with your mineral accumulators and your nitrogen fixers. But here what we've done is, you know, we're going to have the chickens, we'll have this swale composting system, and then we'll have the clovers. And so we'll see how that cycle is. It's a dialogue, it's a communication, so we'll play with that and see how that works. But I think it's going to work really well, especially when, the, when we bring in the chicken layer, in the layer of having the chickens in here. Um, we'll continue to see the kind of growth that we saw in the first year. You know, that's the goal is, how can we move these systems away from having to bring in intense amounts of inputs every single year? We don't want to have to bring in 10, 20 yards of compost and, and 100 yards of wood chips every single year. We want the system to provide the soil building and mulching needs and, and weed suppression needs for itself. Gardens that function like a forest, that generate their own fertility, catch their own water. Systems that can meet human needs while regenerating the land around us. That's the goal of permaculture. When we see ourselves as part of nature, when we work with nature, nature will work with us.